Um, welcome along everybody. <clears throat> um, today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card which I've called In the Bleak Midwinter. So we'll get started. I've used two stamp set collections for this. Um, seasonal branches, um, you can see the two branches I've used and I've used Captured Memories, um, the deer from Captured Memories. Um, I'll put a list of the colours I've used um, on the uh, video comments. Um, there aren't many this time actually, there are six colours and the Versafine Black. So I started off by masking down my card. Now I know a lot of people have asked about masking off on the um, Facebook page. I use um, the low tack stencils tape, you can see it's very low tack, it doesn't damage the cards and because it's quite low tack you can push it down um, to get those clean edges. So what I've done is mask off, I want this sort of a landscape shape. Um, so I'm not very um, precise as I told you in the last video. So obviously if you want to measure this all out and make sure it's all um, neat and tidy, then that's entirely up to you. Um, but I think I'll just go with it. I like to put a black line around afterwards because not only does that um, frame the work, but also if you have bled a little bit into the stencil lines, it covers that up. So let's get started. So I'm going to take the um, deer from the Captured Memories and I'm going to stamp him all over first in the pine cone, um, which seems a little bit odd because it's the darker colour, but I've tried this a number of ways and um, because I want him to be the main feature of this card, I want him to really stand out. So I stamp him all over in the pine cone. And then I'm going to take the Versicolor Copper and just go over that in the copper. And then I've got a colour called uh, Versicolor Umber, which I'm then going to go all over. And then I'm going to go back to the pine cone and I'm just going to go around the edges of the back and the head and the nose and maybe down into the legs a little bit and then a tiny little bit more copper there. And then I'm gonna take a piece of torn paper. Now, you don't have to tear this, you can cut it, but I find when you're stamping things, um, animals and things, you get a more natural look if you tear it. So I'm going to place that about there because I want the deer to be central to my card. So I'm gonna place it about there and then I'm gonna put the deer about there and I know some people have been worried about the deer because um, he's right in a snowdrift. But I can assure you all, no harm was uh, made to any animals making this card. So um, I call it an artistic license. So again, like I said to you before in the previous videos, just let the ink take to the card a little bit. Um, some cards are more porous than others. So, and we've put quite a lot of ink on this one. So, and then we lift that off. And there we have the image of our deer. Now, if the image hasn't come out, you know, you haven't got the light and shade, you can always add that in afterwards. And um, I think I probably will go this slightly um, afterwards. So I'll take that away and you can see what I mean. You've got sort of quite a natural um, image there where um, the legs are in the snow. So what I'm gonna do next is put in the background of this um, deer because I want it to be um, a snowy landscape. And for this, I have cut um, a piece of copy of paper like I did before. So we're going to place that around about here. I want to leave a little bit of space at the top and I want it to just come over the deer's back like that. So, it, you, you know, you get the perspective that it's behind him. And then I take... Um, a dry baby wipe and for this colour in I'm using a Versafine smoky grey um, because I found this is the perfect colour to do this sort of snow scene with. Now as I showed you in the other visit video what we do is we take a little bit on our dry baby wipe and then we rub off because we don't want it to be too dark and then we just create a very gentle line where I've um, where I've got the edge of the copier paper and then avoiding the 
deer's ears. And again, like I said to you before, if you're, if you're nervous about going over the things you've already stamped, make a little mask and just pop it over. Um, you can do that with the low tack tape on uh, Wendy's website. So then I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Try not to move the stencil. Um, because I, I want this to be obviously quite a defined line. And we can always lift it up and have a look. So you can see there, I think I'm gonna just make it a little bit darker. So go back over it. And it's always best to do a little bit at a time because you can add, you can make it darker, but obviously it's very difficult to make it lighter if you overdo it. So um, I think just building up layers is always a good idea. So there we put in the background of our scene. And then I want the deer, obviously, to look like he's caught in a snowdrift. So what I'm going to do with the arch piece of this stencil, the same stencil, I'm going to lay it there where the uh, deer's legs... And we just pop it there, you see, where they hit the snow. And then we just add a little snow line now I'm not doing this all the way down because I just want to give him um, the idea that he's in the snow. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more and I'm going to make it a little bit darker where, where his legs are because obviously they're um, uneven. So, and we'll just take a look at that. And I'm going to move that down a little bit more to get the front legs. And then we just go back over it like this. Take a little bit more ink on my dry baby wipe. And then lift it up. And I think that that will do. So then I'm going to go back up to my background because I obviously want to put something in the background because if you if you look at that card now it it's it really it's just two lines and a deer in the middle so to give it a little bit of perspective I'm going to take my stencil again put it on here and it is exactly the same technique I've used in other you know my tree video and in the last video um, just using a different colour. So what we do is, and this is gently building up the layers, we just do the famous swirls. <laughs> uh, do you think if I paint them, I'll, um, I'll be a rich woman? Well, you never know, do you? Um, so we just um, continue like this. And what's lovely about this technique, which is why I love it so much, is because now I've just put one layer on, you can already see there is a different shade building up in that. So obviously the more layers you, you build, it, it, it almost gives a natural look of, of trees and bushes without you having to do anything at all, other than this just keep layering. And um, I'm gonna just add a little bit more to that. And I think I said to you in the previous bit, video, I always like to make the bottom of the um, trees dark because obviously the light doesn't get under there and it also gives a, a little bit of perspective to the height of the trees. So we we'll just pull that back and you can see already the difference that's made, I think, in the perspective of the picture. So then we go back up to this side and, you know, uh, we, we, these are going to be a little bit smaller because we haven't got so much room, but I'm going to take this right up to the top of the stencil tape. Now, again, if you're worried about your stencil tape bleeding, just be very careful and come down from the top of the stencil tape rather than go up and, and push it up. Um, I don't think, you know, the thing is with homemade cards is that they are all unique and individual. And I wouldn't get too worried if there's a little bit of mistake on something or something's not quite perfect, because that's the whole beauty of them, that somebody can see that you put love and care and time into something. And um, I think, you know, if you try and make it too perfect, A, you're probably never going to be able to do that anyway. And B, well, it sort of spoils the fact that it's homemade. I, I, I've, there's mistakes in all my cards and I relish them, actually. So there you can see, 
um, the other side and then I'm just going to add some um, darker contrast again to the bottom there and create a little line um, as if they were trees and then just go up a little bit like that. Now I think that looks, um, you know, you could leave it like that if you want to but because I want these to sort of look a little bit like trees um, and I hope this doesn't make anyone cringe. Um, I know some people are a bit funny about nails. And if you haven't got any nails, don't worry, because you can just use um, a paintbrush if you want to. But I just dip it in the ink like that, just dab it off onto a piece of card and then just do some upward strokes very subtly into the picture. And you can see, I hope what I'm trying to do is create an illusion of the sort of, you know, what would be the trunk of the tree. And we are only trying to create an impression. So can you see? Now, this side looks okay to me. This side, I think, looks a little bit dark. So I'm just going to go back in and blend that off a little bit. And blend down that side again. And then we take that off and I'm happy with that. Obviously, it's completely down to you um, where you stop with this. And, and if, you, if, you're, if you are artistic, you can go in with a paintbrush and, and add a little bit more to that. But I like to just give the impression of things. I, let, I like to let the receiver of the card just make up their own mind, really. So then I'm going to take the other half of the piece I've cut here. And then we're going to um, put it the right way around. <laughs> um, put it over there. Now... Snow obviously is white, but sometimes white card is very white. So I just want to give um, a little bit of shade. Uh, not a lot, though, because I don't really want to take the white too much away. So what I'm going to do with the um, colour I've got on my baby wipe already, I'm just going to rub that off and then very gently come down and just create a little bit of shading in a couple of places along that. Um, line there and then we just lift that back and it I think um, can you see what I mean if you if you were to leave that white it's sometimes a little bit stark again you don't have to do this it's entirely up to you but and I'm also going to just bleed that line down a little bit here where I've um, put the deer into the snow I'm just going to bleed that line a little bit there and make it a little bit more uh, not so harsh so the next thing we're going to do is the branches and um, I've taken the um, big branch and the small branch and I think it's really you know it's, it's quite straightforward this I'm just going to put this on here while I stamp it because I don't want to get it on my card obviously so I'm taking the uh, Versafine black sorry that's upside down the Versafine black which is a pigment ink uh, Versafine is very good for fine detail and also this is going to be right at the front of the card so I want it to really stand out and be prominent um, it's almost like framing the card so and it doesn't really matter how you do these I always start with the two corners first and again press quite hard um, because I think if you start with the corners in the middle and then you can fill in um, and I, we don't want it exactly the way, right, same way around, so I'm just going to bend it over here. And here you can see the beauty of masking off the whole area of the stencil tape, is I don't have to worry about it going on the rest of the card. So I'm going to put uh, a little bit in the middle. I think it's not, that looks better that way, so I'm going to put a bit there. And then I'm just going to secondary and thirdly stamp, just to get a little bit of the... Uh, fill it out a little bit really and then I'm going to take the smaller one and do exactly the same thing and uh, obviously fill in where you can see little gaps and um, areas that you want to fill in yourself now this is purely your own decision and don't forget the only <laughs> the only disadvantage with having stencil tape on is you forget none of this here is going to be in your actual finished card so make sure you're looking here rather than the whole thing so I think we'll have another bout there and I quite like a bit going there and I think I'm uh, coming in from that side to there and maybe one more 
there and there. So we've got um, the main body of our card here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a tiny, now this sounds really odd, <laughs> a little bit of pink in the background here. Because when you're doing a, a, a winter scene like this, it's quite difficult to think what sky to put with it. So I think I'm using this Versacraft pink and it's called Bubblegum, which I know you're all thinking, oh my God, bright pink on the sky. But what we do, like I've told you before, just take a little bit onto the dry baby wipe, rub it off, and then we're just gonna go in very gently around the deer, just to give a slight suggestion of the sky without really a little bit more, sorry. Um, I didn't pick up enough on my baby wipe there. And then we blend that in really well. And I'm only really putting it in the well there in the gap between the trees. And then I'm just gonna take a clean section of baby wipe and just rub it right in. So you can hardly notice it, but I do think it, um, again, just adds to that idea that you're looking at the um, horizon when you look behind. So I am said to you before that I'd like a little bit more color on the deer. So I'm gonna take the pine cone again. I'm gonna just take a tiny bit on the baby white and again, be very careful just um as, as i said to you before you can always add on it's so that you can't it's very difficult to take off so we're just gonna rub a little bit there and on the back and back up onto the head and i'm just going to go in with that again and if you you know if, if you if you don't think you can do this without um smudging the card again use a little paintbrush or um or don't even bother because you know I think the deer looks fine as it is. I'm just, um, you know, I like to add a little bit of contrast because um, the, the deer is our main feature in this. Or, you know, practice on a piece of paper before you stamp your deer and decide, you know, the best way to ink it to get the most impact. Um, you know, I think we all do that. And then when you're actually making the card, it doesn't always come out like you hoped it would. But the, you can always rescue it by just going back over like this. Right, so there, the deer's got a little bit more colour. And then I think that um, the uh, seasonal um, branches look a bit harsh. Um, and also the cards are very monotone. Um, the pink is very subtle in the background. So I've taken the first colour raspberry and I'm just going to splodge it onto my mat here. You don't, you only need a tiny bit of this. Now, if you've got um, pearl drops or things like that in red or, or any whatever berry colour, a nice orange or something that's a real bright colour, that would look nice on here. Um, but I'm just using a very, very fine paintbrush, you can see. So... Um, I'm going to dip it in my water and I'm going to take the piece of kitchen roll, as I've showed you before, pick up a little bit of the raspberry colour and then the, you'll see on these branches they've already got berries on them. So you don't even have to really work this out. You can just go, and I, 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 say, I wouldn't do it to everyone, but you just pick out um, every now and again where there's a little a berry on the actual branch and add that little bit of red. And I do think this makes um, quite a big difference because um, I say the car's very mono, uh, you know, monochrome apart from that. Um, and also it's subtle enough, although it's adding that nice bit of color, it's subtle enough not to take anything away from our deer um, because after all, she's the main feature of this card. So I'm just gonna add a few more, but you get the general idea. Um, and also, you know, in, in the past when I've made cards like this, I've added little gems, um, especially at Christmas, because you get that lovely um, sparkle or even glitter glues, um, anything you have in your crafty stash. Um, but if you haven't, if you're just starting out and you've only got a few inks, then th this is an ideal technique. And it, you know, I say it can be any color that's bright. Um, it's your card you choose or if you know somebody likes a particular colour. 
Um, and then when you've done it, just take a look at it and think, is there, a, you know, is there one bit that I've missed out? Right there, maybe. And uh, maybe a little bit down here. Right, so I'm just going to rinse that brush out. And then take a look at your card. Um, I think probably we could do with um, a little bit more colour up here. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of this um, Versafine, the smoky grey, and dab it off. <clears throat> Put my mask back in place. And obviously, if you're going to do this, make sure your colour's dry. I'm just taking a risk here because obviously I want to be quick, but... I just want to put a bit more colour in the bottom there, like that. And then with a the snowy scene, I like to do this. Um, it's uh, I use Versa Magic. This is um, white, and I think uh, it, it's very good for creating a sort of misty look. Um, sorry, this one's called Cloud White. So again, we take a little bit onto our dry baby wipe. And even though this is white, I'm just going to rub a little bit off. And then I'm just going to go very gently over the top of the trees. Now, can you see already the difference that's making? It, now, be very careful with this because it's, um, it's, quite, um, it's, got, it's quite good coverage. So you don't want to obscure everything you've already done, but you can already see, look, it, it creates like a misty sort of look. And then you can also bring it down from the sky, just gently into the background. Just to blur these edges here, do you see? Like that. And then just because I told you about the paintbrush technique on the trees, I, I will show you that. So you just splodge again a little bit of your darker colour onto your mat. Again, I'm taking the very fine paintbrush, getting rid of the raspberry colour that I had on it. And then, and I've told you this before, but it is quite important, always dry off onto um, kitchen towel because... Um, card you know if you get water on the card too much it will just ruin the card it will start to bubble up and then the top layer of the paper will come off and you'll ruin your work so um and then just make little upward strokes like that can you say just to give the impression that these are trees in the background and I'm just going to go just down, down there a little bit. And with um, with a paintbrush and water, if you find they're too thick, then you just go back in, smudge it again, and then take your the clean bit of your kitchen towel and go over it like that. And then I'm just going to finish it off by going back in. I'm not even going to put another uh, any more colour on this. I'm going to use the colour I had already and just blend that a little bit. There, like that. And then maybe take a little bit more just to um, make the colours um, blend better. Do you see? So, because so, uh, there's not like a one bit's like that and the other bit's like that. They sort of merge into each other which is if you look at a landscape, that tends to be what happens. Now, in my other, my previous videos, I put in um, a line um, across the horizon. I'm not going to do that with this one because I wanted it to look like the mist's coming down. So I'm going to leave it. Um, the only other thing I would do to this card is um, take off the masking tape. So I'm just going to give, uh, just clean this up a little bit. I'm going to take off my masking tape and now you can see what I mean about it's only printed where you've, where you've um, had it unmasked and you get that lovely crisp finish. And then what I like to do, and this is a good tip if you find that you do get a lot of um, bleed from whatever tape you're putting down, um, I take a fine liner and this one is uh, 03 
it's a little bit thicker than the ones I've used before. And then take a ruler, or you don't have to use a ruler for this, you can do a wiggly line. Um, I'm not very good at, at that, I have tried it, but I, I, I don't know, I tend to jerk when I do it, and then I end up with a great big line down there. So, um, but if you like doing that, and they do look lovely, I've seen, um, I've seen lots of cards with that on, um, then that, by all means, you know, do it your own way. And then I'm gonna mark off the top again, making sure my ruler's fairly straight. Um, again, you know, nothing's ever perfect, is it? So if you want this all perfect, you can measure all the edges um, when you put your tape on. But like I said before, frankly, uh, life's too short for that. So then we add this line down here. Now, a bit of a tip, if, you've, if it's really bled, just use a thicker pen. Because the thicker you make this border, the more sort of 3D it looks. It, it, it's lovely, actually. I've, I've, um, I found that out by accident. Um, so, you know, you can go really as thick as you like. Now, you'll see on here that that's coming down a bit further than that, and that's going on there. So I'm going to try and at least match that up. I'm not too worried if it's, um, if it's you know, I'm not going to go right down the bottom again. But I'm going to put that line there. Now... If you see there, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of the red that's come over that line. So what I'm gonna do is just go a little bit further up and put in another line, which is really what I meant by just make it thicker. Not only does it cover up that, but it doesn't make any difference to the picture. In fact, if anything, I think it just enhances it. And then because I've gone right down, and I've, I've sort of done this on purpose to show you that this little technique um, will, unless you've gone really, it's really badly bled through the tape, you see, it will just cover up that. So don't despair. If you lift off after spending hours doing a card, you lift off the masking tape and find that that's happened to you, then try this rather than throw the card away. And then I'm just gonna do the same here because I've gone over the line on this one as well. So I'm just gonna add that line in there. And I quite like it like that with the two sides um, thinner. But if you wanted to even it up, you could add, you could do, you know, make the lines either side thicker. And then for those that didn't see it on the other video, I've got a smudge here. Um, I showed you last time that the way I get rid of smudges is to use a very fine piece of sandpaper and just rub that on the offending area. And as I said before, do this when your card is completely finished because it takes a layer of the paper off, so you don't really want to, and then a clean babe, pop, either a clean bit of the babe wipe or a clean baby wipe, and then it's gone. So that's the finished card. Um, I think we would probably add a little eye in here, just to, and I like to add a little bit of a nose there. And you'll notice on the cards that I post on the um, Facebook page, I don't tend to put sentiments. Now, there's two reasons for that. Firstly, um, I like to keep a stack of cards. And um, if you, so if I, for example, if I was to put a Christmas message on this, I couldn't use it for anything else. So it means that you've got, you know, um, you've got the opportunity to use this card for different occasions. Um, and the other thing is, you never really know till you've finished a card, I think. Uh, you know, some people like to put the sentiment on first or think, well, I want a card for this occasion, so it's got to have this sentiment on it, which is, I've done it myself as well. But I just think, when you finished a card like this, you think, where best would the sentiment look? Or one bit at the top and one bit at the bottom. So, you know, you make up your own way of making your cards. I think that's the joy of crafting. And while I've been speaking to you, I've also smudged it again, so we'll just get rid of that. So there's my card in the bleak midwinter. I hope that's um, helped you and I look forward to seeing you or um, uh, having you along for the next video, which I hope will be very soon. Thank you for watching.